Welcome to the first episode of D23's Armchair Archivist. I'm Josh Trichetta. And I'm Steve Zarnecki. And each week, with the help of D23, the Disney official fan club, and the staff of the Walt Disney Archives, we're going to go on some amazing adventures as we explore the history, the mystery, and the magic of the Walt Disney Archives. Now, we're not archivists. We're going to leave that job to the professionals. Mm, good idea. But as staff members of D23, we are all obviously, obviously. huge Disney fans. Right. Since it all started with Walt, we figured it would be fitting in our first episode to pay tribute to Walt Disney himself. Absolutely. And you know, Josh, what's really cool is that the archivists here at the studio are, are constantly finding new, never-before-seen footage and artifacts from Walt's life. And in fact, Becky Klein, who's the director of the Walt Disney Archives, she has pulled some stuff for us today to look at. While you go over and talk to Becky, I'm going to go and see Ed Holbeman. Now, Ed is a film archivist, and he recently rediscovered a very rarely seen clip of Walt Disney. Very cool. That sounds pretty cool. I think we can do more damage this Let's way. Split up. All right, buddy. All right. Meet back in Legends Plaza. Oh, sounds All right, good. See All you right, then. Haunted House of Iwerks. Oh. I'm here in the historic Disney film vaults. We're about to meet a film archivist named Ed Holbeman. Now, Ed was charged with a monumental task of tracking down the last publicly shown clip of Walt Disney. And after some serious searching through the archives and the film vaults, he found it. Now, Ed showed that clip for the very first time at D23's Destination D event at Disneyland. And he joins us now. My hands are now officially dirty. Hope it's you don't okay, mind. I'm used to it, Josh. How are you doing? Thanks for joining us. Tell me a little bit about how you found this clip. Tony Baxter and I put together a vintage uh, Disneyland show, and we were talking about the very last uh, filming of Walt Disney. And I said to Tony, well, I think it's Epcot film. It used to be known as the uh, Florida Project. And Tony said, no, no, Ed, there's another film. And I remember it. I saw it where I was supposed to see it one night, and it never happened. And it got my interest peaked. And then in just recently, this past summer, Stephen Vagnini, who was the uh, graduate assistant in the archives, brought a script to me and said, Ed, what do you think about this? This kind of points to the last filming. And I looked at it and I said, that's what I need. Give it to me. I'll, I'll go, you know, I'll start looking. It, it was something that we had, but we didn't know what the value of it. We didn't know what the treasure was, you know, that we had. But here's the number. I want to show this to you. This is a recording log of what Walt shot the last day that he ever uh, filmed at the stage. And this number right here is a number that was on Steven's script that he showed me. I used that. I went back into the vault. I used that number to find our recording roll. And inside the recording roll was this recording log sheet, which shows Walt's last filming. And knowing that and seeing the response it got at Destination D, have your D23 uh, Kleenex handy because uh, it is kind of emotional to see Walt uh, yes. power through this. Uh, so without any further ado, let's take a look at An Evening with Walt Disney. Let's right, do that. Let's do it. Enjoy. Good evening, friends. I'm sorry to have to welcome you to this invitational showing of Follow Me Boys in this way. I'd give anything to be there with you, but this seems to be one of those times I'm tied down here at the studio night and day. Of course, it's always this way when we're shooting a picture. And it so happens we're in the middle of shooting one right now. It's a comedy feature called uh, Blackbeard's Ghost, starring uh, Peter Ustinoff, Dean Jones, and Susan Plachette. Now, we've completed quite a few pictures since finishing Follow Me Boy. But there's one special one that I just have to mention. It's titled The uh, Happiest Millionaire. Now, this is one we call a happy family musical. It's the true story of the fabulous Anthony Drexel Biddle family of Philadelphia in the era of 1917. Now, the stars are Fred McMurray, a real Disney favorite, as Mr. Biddle, the lovely Greer Garson as Mrs. Biddle, two newcomers, Leslie Ann Warren and John Davidson, playing Cordelia Biddle and Angie Duke. And it was the romance between these two that brought together the, together <laughs> the Biddle and Duke family. And introducing the fabulous Tommy Steele, star of the Broadway hit Half a Sixpence. Tommy plays the part of John Lawless, the butler. Now there's a sequence in the picture that I'd like very much to run for you. It's that part where Tommy, fresh off the boat from Ireland, has been sent by an employment agency to the Biddle home to apply for the job as butler. He walks in unannounced, and this is what happened. Well, that's just one of the many songs in the show. And naturally, being part Irish, it's 
one of my favorites, of course. Now, The Happiest Millionaire won't be released until late next year. So let's get on with the business at hand, and that is Follow Me Boys. To us, this is a very special kind of motion picture, and one of which we're very proud. It has a fine cast, and uh, oh yes, you're about to meet a 15-year-old boy for whom I predict a great acting future. His name is Kurt Russell. I hope you enjoy the show, and incidentally, have a handkerchief handy. If you're like me, you're not only going to laugh a lot, but you're going to shed a few happy tears. So thanks for coming, and again, I'm sorry I can't be there with you personally for this occasion, but here now is Follow Me Boy. You have to complete this story, actually, because you know, when I was talking to Tony about the Epcot film being the last filming of Walt Disney, we, we got all the information in, we got all the recording roles in. It turns out that that was the last filming of Walt Disney. It looks like there's always something to rediscover in the Walt Disney That's archives. Right. That's Ed, right. Thanks so much for being on the show. Absolutely. Come back, please. Absolutely. All right. Let's go take a look at what Steve and Becky have over at the Walt Disney Archives. Thanks, Josh. Well, we're here in the Walt Disney Archives where today they have put together an amazing collection of some of the items from Walt's personal and professional life. I'm here with the newly named director of the Walt Disney Archives, Becky Klein. Uh, now, Becky, tell me how long have you been here? I've worked for the company for over 21 years and 17 of that right here in the archives. Now, we're so honored because today you have showcased and pulled a bunch of uh, items here from Walt's history, I mean, the personal and, and stuff from his, uh, his career. Can you kind of go over this? I mean, just dive right into it. Oh, absolutely. Well, probably the oldest piece here is this uh, megaphone over here. It's a director's megaphone, and it's from the Laughogram Studio, which was a series of silent cartoons that Walt did previous to the Alice comedies. And then here closest to us are a couple um, awards that people will probably recognize. This one's an Emmy, and Walt won five Emmys in his lifetime, which is a pretty good record. There's not too many people that do that, but that kind of pales in comparison to the Oscar. Um, this is one of Walt Disney's 32 Academy Awards which is a lot more than anybody in history he holds the record. So nobody's beat him yet? Nobody, nope. uh, probably nobody ever will. These are Walt's glasses. Those were found in his office uh, when he passed away in 1966. These pieces here are kind of interesting. These are drawings done by Walt Disney. We think these were done about 1917 when he was a kid um, for his high school. And this particular one is a postcard that he drew. And it's kind of fun. It came out of this box uh, over here, which was given to the Walt Disney Archives by Roy E. Disney. But this particular piece was a little postcard that was drawn by Walter. You see it says Disney down here at the bottom and has a 17, so we know it was about 1917. And on the back of it, it's a um, postcard to his mother who was uh, visiting his, her, her brother was ill in Kansas City and she went there to take care of him. And so Walt wrote and made this little postcard for her and it says, Dear Mother, everything is going well. I got a hundred in my grammar today. Glad to hear Uncle Harry is much better. Loving Walter. And then up at the top it says P.S. 10 below here. This last piece is just one of my favorite pieces that's in here uh, in the reading room of the archives. We keep it here on display. This is a script from That Darn Cat. And the interesting thing about this is it has Walt's notes all through it. You can see he wrote with a red grease pencil and he would scribble notes on everything. Memos and, and um, scripts and, and things like that and make his changes and then give them to the producers and directors. Amazing. So this was one that was also in his office when he Very passed cool. on. And I can see he had a lot of scripts and stuff. Obviously he was making lots of changes and editorial notes. Oh and yeah, kind of he was close to everything that came out of the company right up to the day he died. Phenomenal. Well, and clearly this is just a sliver of, of things that we have from Walt and um, excited because in, in future episodes we're going to look at more of Absolutely. Walt's items. So. Thanks so much for pulling this out for us today. Welcome. And uh, thank you so much for joining us here for our, our first episode. Well, welcome and uh, welcome to Armchair Archivist, everybody. We're glad you joined us. Steve, my mind is totally blown by all the fantastic stuff that's in the Walt Disney Archives. Can you imagine the adventures we're going to have every week getting to go through all this stuff? Crazy. And the best part about it all, we're getting paid for this. I know. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be, whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, the, what? You're getting paid? Uh, yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Well, unfortunately, that wall clip did run us over in time, and these episodes are only supposed to be five minutes long, so... We're totally yeah. worth it. Absolutely. And better yet, we have so many more surprises in store for you every week, which brings us to an important point. If you'd like to learn more about the history, mystery, and magic of the Disney Archive... And, of course, anything else that's cool and happening around the company itself... D23, Disney's official fan club, is for you. Join the fun at Disney.com slash D23. Awesome, and that's going to wrap it up for our first ever episode of Armchair Archivist. I'm Steve Zarnecki. And I'm Josh Churchetta. And remember, dreams can come true. It did for us. Exactly. Dude, tell me about that moment. Okay, we're we'll